William died all curled up in his favorite chair, studying a book written in Latin, truly in the happiest place he could have been. William Ellery. William Ellery. William Ellery. William Ellery was born on December 22, 1727, in Newport, Rhode Island. William's father was a Harvard graduate, working as a merchant, and he taught his young William right by his side throughout his entire childhood, encouraging his mind to explore the things that he was the most passionate about. William followed in his father's footsteps and graduated from Harvard in 1747, studying Greek and Latin, and then returning home to set up shop as a merchant before transitioning over into customs. While working in Newport, William began furthering his Harvard education by pursuing a new career path as a lawyer. In 1770, William finally opened his law practice, at which point he became more and more involved in his local politics. As a strong advocate for American independence, William found himself in opposition to the British rule, but wasn't able to find an outlet for his passions. When one of Rhode Island's representatives in the Continental Congress died in 1776, William saw his opportunity to serve his nation. He was then elected to fill the vacancy in the Congress and took his seat in May of 1776. William was an influential member of the Congress and took an active role in the important discussions that took place that summer. On the 4th of July, 1776, William Ellery signed the Declaration of Independence at the age of 48. In the following years, William continued his useful service to his young nation. In 1777, he offered Rhode Island as the place to organize and dispatch the Navy's fleet of fire ships, which are vessels specifically designed to be set ablaze to deter any oncoming enemy attack. Despite being the hub for this defense force, Rhode Island was still fell to the British shortly thereafter. During Rhode Island's time of occupation, William's home, as well as most of his property, were all burned up, leaving him without anywhere to go when the war was over. Though we don't know if William rebuilt on the very same property or moved somewhere else, we do know that he remained in Rhode Island. In 1785, William retired from his state's representation, and he began a very short career as Chief Justice of Rhode Island Supreme Court. And just one year later, George Washington appointed William to be the Collector of Customs for the town of Newport. This new position ended up being the last role that William would ever hold in his life. William served in this role for 35 years until his death. February 15th, 1820, at the age of 92. And William died, curled up in his favorite chair, studying a book written in Latin, truly in the happiest place he could have been. Charles Augustus Goodrich writes of William's character. Indeed, the character of Mr. Ellery was much to be admired. He was indeed thought by some to have been too tenacious of his opinion and not always free from austerity to others. But the years mellowed down these unpleasant traits of his character and showed that he had exercised a watchfulness over himself, not entirely in vain. He manifested an uncommon disregard for the applause of men. It was often upon his lips, humility rather than pride, become such creatures as we are. Mr. Ellery was truly a passionate person, and I can relate to that because I, too, am very passionate in my opinions, and I stand up for what I believe in. That must be why I love these Founding Fathers so much. The End <laughs>